Today I'm going to tell you why carrying on a loaded chamber is the only correct way to carry a gun. Now I can already hear some people's ears starting to perk up. How dare this guy tell me that the only correct way to carry a gun is on a loaded chamber. Slow it down a little bit. I'm going to tell you my opinion on this and why I think carrying on a loaded chamber is the correct way. But let me go ahead and caveat this with a couple of different things here. Not everybody's experience level is, is maybe as high as yours, maybe as low as the next person. Everybody's kind of in a different spot when it comes to concealed carry. Some have done it for 10 days. Some have done it for decades. Wherever you fall in there, I'd love to hear your opinion after the video. Just let me speak my piece on this. Second, I don't want to get anybody uncomfortable with the idea or make people feel like you have to carry this way. This of course is just my opinion, but what I do want to do is shed some light on this and maybe give you a different way to think about it. Like, oh wow, okay, so this is how it works and this is why it may be safer to carry on a loaded chamber than what you think. So hopefully I can give you a lot of good information here in one video. Let's go to the table though first. And before we get to the ways that I've found that have made me more comfortable with carrying on a loaded chamber, let me show you how most popular guns work so we can get an idea of the mechanics of the gun first. Now I have a few guns here to illustrate some of the more popular options that you're gonna see as far as guns. So the first thing that people may think about whenever it comes to carrying on a loaded chamber is, does it have a safety? Well, this gun right here has a lot of different safeties, some of which I'm gonna show you here, right? So this is a double to single action, meaning that on the very first trigger pull, it works as a safety because that first trigger pull is really long and really heavy. And so to get that first round to go off, you really have to intentionally pull the trigger and it works like a safety in and of itself. So most people, if they're gonna carry this gun in double action, there's really no need for the additional safety that this actually has. But if you want to be super duper ultra safe, you could do that as well. And now it deactivates the trigger. One thing to keep in mind, manual safeties, you wanna train with them if your gun has it to always sweep that off when you draw out of your holster, you're practicing whatever, because that mechanical safety will and can get in your way of saving your life if you're not used to sweeping it off. Now, let's say that double action trigger, you're just not super comfortable with it, so you wanna carry it in single action. Well, the single action trigger is much better, but it's also much lighter. So in this case, similar to a 1911 and some other guns, if you're gonna carry in single action, you wanna have that safety engaged because the trigger pull is so light. You could inadvertently just pull that and you know if your finger happens to go to the trigger when you don't want it, that's a really light pull from just here to here. So you have a manual safety right there. You could carry it cocked and locked, which is what that means. It's single action, round loaded into the chamber and the safety is on. Modern guns like the Glock and every other company out there that makes a striker fire gun have a way of incorporating the safety into the gun without having a manual safety you have to contend with and possibly forgetting about. The first one you'll notice is the safe action trigger right here. So essentially there's a blade in the middle. You have to pull the trigger from the blade in the middle to be able to get the gun to fire. So if anything kind of gets caught in the trigger guard and it's not directly on the middle there, it's not going to fire. But also, if you were to drop this gun, that has to release the firing pin safety on the inside of the gun, which is right there. So essentially, when you pull the trigger, this thing right here gets depressed, and then that way, the actual striker, this striker thing right here, Try to show it where y'all can actually see what's happening. But you can kind of see how that gets drawn back. It's under spring tension in here. And this will come back quickly and go forward really quickly to then fire. 
So it's not like there's nothing in the way. So even if you have a round in the chamber, it's got to go through all of these processes to be able to fire. And that's how they make them drop safe too, by having things like the fire and pin block right there. One more example I'll show you. This is a striker fire gun from SIG, but it also has a manual safety. And that's because of the military contract these guys are under. Now this is the civilian version, but the principle's still the same. You have a short striker fired action, boom. There's not much distance there for the trigger to, to travel for the gun to go off. Same principles apply though. Break it down. This one looks a little bit different, but this little guy right there, right there, that has to be pushed down in order for the firing pin to come out. And you can kind of see that. See, if I just push forward and that thing isn't pushed down, the firing pin will not come out right here. Okay, but if I push that down, then you can see the firing pins able to come down. So that internal safety, it's not the only safety either, that's built in on the inside, means you don't have to have that manual safety, which again can get in the way, but because of the military and their requirements, this has to have a manual safety as well. And if this is something that makes you feel more comfortable in having a manual safety, there are companies that still put manual safeties on their guns just because of that, or because of law enforcement regulations or whatever the case may be. If that makes you feel better, fine. Just understand when you practice and you train, you always wanna practice sweeping that safety off. Even if you think you thought you left it off, <laughs> that was a mouthful, you still wanna practice sweeping that thing off. Every time you draw out of a holster, you're practicing, you're at the range, whatever the case may be because you don't want that to be on in a time of crisis. So with all that said, how do you become comfortable carrying a round in the chamber? Let's talk about some of those ways that I've used to make my own self comfortable with it because there for the longest time, I wasn't comfortable with it either. Hey, if you're new here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you never miss a video from me. Weekly, I am releasing concealed carry videos, new rifle reviews, new pistol reviews, and a host of other gun-related content right here in one place. And if you wanna support what I do, you can actually join the channel right here for a dollar a month or become a patron, and you guys all get early access to the videos, tier rewards, shout outs. There is a whole host of benefits that you get for joining the channel for as little as a freaking dollar or $12 a year. You can also find my content on Rumble and Utreon as well. Those are some backups there that I'd love to have you come over and check out as well. I'm gonna leave a link to all this down below so it's super easy. Boom, click the link, you're there. Big thanks. Now let's get back to the rest of the video where I can hopefully give you some more tips on carrying with one in the chamber. The first thing that we want to do always is one of the first things that you're gonna learn when you handle firearms anyways and that's treating every gun as if it were loaded. Now, if you treat every gun, every single gun as if it's loaded, then the chances of you having a negligent or accidental discharge are gonna be freaking way low. Of course, there's a lot more rules to this, but generally speaking, that's a very important one. So what we do with every gun, if we were to treat it as if it's loaded, is we drop the mag, right? We check the chamber to visually inspect. There's nothing in that chamber and also the magazine. Now, right now I'm using snap caps to demonstrate my point. And that goes for every time we handle a gun as well. So you see where my finger is. Your finger is always off of the trigger until you're ready to fire. And that goes for your concealed carry gun and any gun ever, right? So if I have it in this holster, you can see again, where does my finger go? It would be on the outside of the trigger guard, you know? I don't know if you've seen people like this, surely you have if you've been around long enough, but as soon as you go to hand them a gun, the first thing they do is not drop the mag, not check the chamber, none of that, you know, the, the correct way, what they do is the finger goes right there, right? Oh man, that's really nice. And a lot of times I've seen people, they don't even pull the trigger. They just literally, oh man, that's really, really nice. Oh yeah, and they might have it pointed in a safe direction, that's fine but that is the wrong thing to do. So if you wanna get comfortable with carrying around in the chamber, 
you got to remember and you got to practice keeping that booger finger off of the trigger until you're ready for this thing to go boom. So getting some snap caps and stuff so you can get that action down and stuff is a great way to start. Again, you want to make sure that you have all live ammo out of the gun and away from the gun too, right? But we load up these snap caps. When we practice our draws now, if we happen to make a mistake, fortunately, it's not real bullets, right? But when we practice our draws, we want to make sure that we have that finger off of the trigger. And so you want to get used to that, but you also want to do this under live fire as well if you have a range that'll allow you to do this. You want to really get that timing down. So you don't want, let's say we're here, right? And I'm going to put my finger on the trigger, obviously, just to demonstrate, but we don't want to be right here and then instantly, see where my finger is? On the trigger all the way up to here because we could, in theory, pull that trigger that way. Maybe our, maybe our shooting buddy is that way. Maybe our wife's that, maybe God forbid our kids that, anybody is that way. We don't want to do that. So it's really, really important to have the finger discipline down pat, right? Whenever you're drawing out of your holster, right? So that way, I kind of got it caught up in my shirt there, but that way, whenever we're going through these live fire drills, you already have it ingrained in your brain that your finger is not going to touch the trigger until we're right here on target. See how that, that transition from my finger, just watch my finger only right? I'm on the target at that point and then you'll see my finger go to the trigger. So this right here or this right here if you're a left-handed shooter and this right here are going to be the most crucial parts of you being safe but you also getting comfortable with the idea knowing that you're doing your part or I'm doing my part to keep my finger off the trigger until I am for sure ready to fire and of course, everything that goes beyond that, you know, what's beyond your target and, you know, all those safety rules. But that is key to getting comfortable with this. Another thing that is going to help you immensely, and I would not overlook this at all, is a quality holster that covers the trigger guard. It is a must. Let me show you something real quick. So I recently did this video on cheap concealed carry holster products, right? And I did this fanny pack. <laughs> and, uh, as funny as it is, now watch what I do here. I know there's snap caps in this gun. Every time you look at the gun, you verify. One of my snap caps just came out, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna load the snap cap back in there. But crucial, right? If somebody, on a little tangent, what a lot of people will do is like clear a gun. Hey man, hey, can I take a look at your gun? Yeah, sure, man. And so the person that owns the gun will verify, maybe put the mag in their pocket or whatever, clear it, right? And then they'll hand it over. And then the person that picks up the gun or grabs the gun from them will be like, oh man, cool, dude. And the finger goes right to the trigger. And it doesn't matter if somebody just checked that gun right in front of you 15 times. As soon as it goes back over to you, switches hands, drop the mag, of course. Boom, drop the mag check the chamber. Very crucial. Anyways, side note done. All right. This holster or this, <laughs> this uh, fanny pack has a holster like this, right? And so because it's in the fanny pack itself, it, it's still a little sketch to me because you have this soft material and it's able to move around a little bit in here and that's kind of why this is the last way I had it set up whenever I showed it off but that's why I think the best way to carry this if you were to get something like this is to kind of have it around the back of the gun like that so it can't really move you know what I mean you just then have to get used to breaking the uh, snap right here so you can then draw the gun out but any holster that is just for example like this loose and this insecure, you don't want anything to do with that. You want a holster where the lockup 
is solid and it's not going anywhere until you're ready to pull it out of the gun. Okay, so very crucial to get yourself a quality holster. If you're familiar with me, you know that we work with Tolster and I do not shy away from that because they make the best inside the waistband holsters in my opinion. And they're discounted through my channel. So, and they're made in the USA. So it's, it's a pretty good deal. You know what I mean? Like, but getting a quality holster is, is, is another thing you must do to get comfortable with this. The last thing that we'll talk about, but definitely an important aspect of this is getting yourself trained. Now, if you have the money to go to a reputable place that will train you and you can train under stress, you can train in multiple conditions and different situations, this is ideal. If you don't have that and that's something maybe you wanna save up money for, that's a fantastic idea, but you could also go to different classes. Remember, concealed carry classes are not like the end all be all in knowing things about guns. That's just basically really to get you started and just some real basic things. But hanging around people that have done this for a long time, that are committed to doing this the right way is another great way to get comfortable with this. Talking to some of those people. Maybe those people have a different opinion than I do and that's totally fine. I've showed it on camera sometimes. You know, you can save upwards of, you know, a half of a second sometimes in drawing loading the gun, getting on target, compared to drawing the gun, getting on target with a loaded gun, right? That's gonna be completely up to you. My opinion is it is worth the time saved and you're not going to add a ton of extra risk if you do your part and you're safe behind the gun. Knowing how the gun works, keeping your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire and practicing that a secure holster that you can trust your gun to be in, training and being around people, training with other people, training with friends, people that are knowledgeable in this can all help lead you to be comfortable with carrying with a round inside of the chamber. This is something that every concealed carrier has to, uh, you know, make a decision for themselves. Not only concealed carry, open carry, however you carry, that's something we all have to decide for ourselves. My opinion, I think, it is the only way to carry a gun. Have I ever carried on an empty chamber? Yes. And so what I started doing is in one of my last videos is keeping this gun loaded at all times, topping off the mag, putting it in the holster, putting it in the safe when I come home for the day. When I leave for the next day, I put my home defense in the safe and put this out, boom, goes right on. So that way I know it is always loaded, ready to go. Also informing people in your household, hey, the gun's in the safe, they're always loaded. Teaching your you know, kids, if they're you know, appropriate age, whatever you think that may be, that's not on me, that's on you to, to teach them. But I believe that is a good way to kind of keep them safe, let your significant other know, hey, you know, the guns are loaded, this is how we load, unload, all of that kind of stuff. Keep them informed. Don't keep them in the dark about things like this. You know, that's how accidents happen, man. Keeping your guns locked away too, whenever they're not in use, you know? There's all kinds of ways that you can safely keep a gun loaded inside of your home. Fingerprint safes are fantastic. There's a lot of different ways, man. So you gotta find what works best for you. Hopefully these ideas will help you in your journey. If you have any suggestions for anybody down below, if you agree or completely disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Big thanks to you guys and to all of our patrons and channel members. Your outro's coming right now. Thanks again. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.
misses. That penis target is just swinging away. <laughs> Let's get the uh, competitor and try that one. 